eventually, if you like the outdoors, there's going to come a time when you want to spend longer periods out on the trail, either in cabins or in more fixed permanent camps. One of the most important skills in that situation is being able to make bread. And that's what I'm going to do. And when it, when it comes to baking, we need a good hot fire with a good base of embers. So we need nice dry wood. This would be very good. And one of the secrets is not to split the wood. We're going to leave the wood in the round. That'll give us better, longer lasting embers. And this sort of diameter is absolutely ideal. Once we start to work in the outdoors in a more permanent way, we use slightly more robust tools. A folding buck saw like this is ideal because it's easy to transport, it's safe to transport, it's perfect on canoe journeys. It enables us to easily use slightly thicker bits of wood or to more quickly cut smaller pieces. Lengths like that are absolutely ideal and you can tell how dry it is by the sound it makes. So making bread, first thing is we must prepare our fire. We've got a little slow fire which is what we use most of the time because it's convenient and we don't waste any fuel. But to bake we're going to need a good bed of embers. So we need to perk this fire up a little bit. I'll put a few split pieces on to help get us going. that and then we just build this up a little bit. And I started that early so that it's going to burn down to give us a good bed of embers. Embers give a nice steady heat which is what we're after. I've swung a billy over the fire because we're going to need some hot water as well. Next job is to get my camp oven ready and for this bread I'm going to use one of these cast iron pots. Some people call them Dutch ovens, some call them camp ovens. They come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. Some have got legs on the bottom. I tend not to use those because they're difficult to pack in a vehicle. They get knocked and broken very easily. Just a straightforward pot is, is what we're after. And of course, you can use a tripod like this to suspend it, or you could make one out of wood. What's nice about these is these are cast iron. It means they get warm and they hold a good heat. and They're ideal for baking. The next job is to oil this. If you do this right, nothing will stick to the pot and you won't have to have any problems washing it. I don't want to make it really hot, I just want to warm it, so just pop it there on the edge. The next job is to make the yeast brew. And what I've got is I've got some hot water here. And I need somewhere between, just, just under half a litre, about 400 mils of hot water. Just gonna test that, that's a little on the warm side. Just gonna cool that, cool that off a bit. Just a fraction above body temperature is ideal. And I, I do think about these kind of army mugs is that they have markings on the side and you can work out the volume is really easy. Now, ideal for travelling outdoors. So there's my warm water mix. Into that I'm going to put a sachet of yeast. I like sachets because it tends to stay fresh longer than if it's in a pot. And I've got sugar here. I've got about a dessert spoonful of sugar and I'm going to add that in there as well. So I'm giving that a good stir and we just set that aside in the warmth there the sunlight and that's starting to come together and activate. A really good tip is to make sure all your utensils are good and warm. If they're cold they'll interfere with the rising of the yeast and the, and the bread won't be so good. Just sit that in there for a few moments to warm that bowl up. Just going to take a bag of flour, put it all in, and then what I do 
in case I need any extra flour to add to it, I take a handful out and put it back in the bag. Because this flour sat in the bag for a while, it's good to just bring it to life again. And to this, I'm now going to add here, what I've got here is I've got two, tea, two spoonfuls of sugar, two spoonfuls of milk powder, and one of salt. And now I'm going to add the yeast mixture into here. And just mix that in. And you stir in the mixture and you start to get a dough and there comes a point now when you can handle it with your hands and it won't stick too badly and at that point swap to using a hand but it's good to see that you can do this in a bowl or you could even do it in the camp oven if you have to sometimes on trips what i've done is i've taken a jerry can laid it on its side and cleaned it off and used that as a table surface to, to work on. It's not the easiest thing to knead bread in a bowl but it does work very well and as you can see we're still starting to take on a bit of life now. It'd be nice to get a bit more force into it. The bread's really important. There's nothing better than the smell of baking bread particularly when you're outdoors. If you're out for any prolonged length of time, this becomes a daily ritual. And uh, very satisfying it is too. It's, it's lovely. If you're on a trip with some mates, what can be really nice is if each day when you go out for your, whatever it is you're doing, maybe a bit of fishing, a bit of hunting, or botanizing, or watching wildlife, if you each take it in turns to be back at camp one day and cook for the others. That's a really satisfying way to be outdoors. That's what we're after. It's starting to get the texture of like a baby's bottom. That's about right now for the next stage, which is to put this into, a, into the camp oven where it's nice and warm and let the yeast do its business. And this should rise and double in size. Now, hopefully, this will be warm, but not too hot. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to pop that in there. And take that off. You lift this right up high, right up at the top. Just leave it over there. Well, the bread's been proving for about an hour now, just under an hour. And, oh, it's sticking to the lid. That's good. It's double in size. I can see it hasn't quite filled into this part of the pot. There's a good reason for that. There's a gentle breeze blowing this way, meaning that this side of the pot will be cooler than the other side. And that's all it takes to spoil the proving. So you have to really make sure you get the right environment to do this job. But that's going to be fine. What I need to do now is build the fire up and bake it. We're going to leave that about there. I'll build the fire up. Just going to lift that up so it doesn't get too hot. bread's been uh, baking now for about half an hour and already you can see that it's starting to push the lid off the off the, the camp oven here it really is rising well 
And what I'm going to do now is just going to put some embers on top of the of the pot so we get an even heat throughout. And this is one of the great advantages of these these sorts of Dutch ovens, camp ovens, and they actually have a, a, a little lip around the top of the lid designed to hold the embers. critical time now really we're getting well into the cooking it's had about 45 minutes I could smell bread and all of a sudden I could smell a little bit of burning Whew. so I just want to lift the lid and see how we're doing oh that's starting to look pretty good so I'm going to leave the lid on now I'm not going to put any more embers on top might just put just a few not not too many I don't want to scorch it on top The loaf's had an hour now, so I want to just test it and see how it's doing. The first thing is to get these ashes off the lid. Oh, it's like burning smell from the pot. Now I've got a stick, push it in. If it comes out dry, which it has, I reckon that bread's done. It's a slight burning smell, so it might have scorched on the underside, but. stuck which is a good sign always a good sign a little bit scorched on the underside but that's all pretty good looking loaf that good sound and I'm just going to leave it to cool with the cloth over the top that will help to stop the crust going too dry just like that brilliant and the pot's clean let that cool down that's why it's so good for baking and while that's cooling I'll just have a little bit of a tidy up well in an ideal world you'd leave this till it was properly cool before you sliced it but I've got a film crew salivating for this so it's still a little bit warm putting the cloth on top just helps us to keep the crust from going too hard and um, well it's got to be done hasn't it it's got to be sliced and tasted Just have a look. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? And I guess what we have to do is, in time-honoured fashion, our poison taster is, of course, the man wearing the earmuffs, the sound recordist. So, over to you, Tim. Thank you. Mmm. That's good. There you go, how to make a loaf of bread outdoors. Once you can do that, you can stay as long as you've got flour and yeast to do the baking. Good health. Mm. We're really blessed with our seasons, and I don't think there's much better than this, eh? Spring, fantastic. All the leaves are just absolutely new and fresh and young. It's lovely. And this white plant here really is a sign of spring. This is ramsons. Some people call it wild garlic. It's actually an onion. And um, look at that, isn't that beautiful? The bits I like to use are these unopened flower buds. They're absolutely delicious. I think it's a nice, delicate, not overpowering spring onion taste. If you use the green parts of the large plants, the, strong, the taste is a little bit on the strong side. So by using the flower bits, it's, uh, it's much milder, much nicer. And the other bit that's worth using is down at the base and you look for the young leaves the ramsons and they're much milder in flavor a delicate addition to a salad not too many of them just a few there are other bits you can use as well you can pickle 
the leaves and make a nice preserve with that. And not now, but a bit later on, you can dig up the root of the plant and it looks like a, a, a kind of a skinny bulb of a spring onion. And if you cook that in the embers of your fire, it tastes like a shallot. It's a really useful plant, delicious. A lovely sign.